Royal Infirmary of Edinburgh is part of NHS Lothian. It's a major acute teaching hospital with a 24-hour accident and emergency department. It also provides a full range of acute medical and surgical services for patients from across Lothian and specialist services for people throughout the southeast of Scotland and beyond. The Royal counts more than 900 patient beds, including an 18-bed general intensive care unit and 12 more beds in the general high dependency unit. There will be further expansion to 42 general critical care beds by 2020, and this will require considerable training for about 350 nurses over the next few years to increase the level of understanding of airway management. I'm Mark Dunn, I'm a consultant in intensive care. Uh, I'm also a consultant in emergency medicine and retrieval medicine. Um, I've had an interest in airway management since very early on in my training and uh, have uh, particularly had an interest in difficult airway management. Um, part of this has involved auditing emergency department intubations um, and trying to look at when and where problems occur and introducing uh, solutions. We've had a patient who has been having a bronchoscopic procedure using our stack and our flexible uh, fiber optic scope system. At the same time on our unit, it's a big unit, it's got 18 beds, all of which patient, all the patients can be ventilated at one time. Somebody else had another airway emergency. We don't have the facilities in our current unit to have two scope stacks and therefore having a disposable, flexible, non-fibre optic, immediately available video scope system meant that that patient could have best possible care. The NAP4 guidelines made a recommendation that you should always have available a flexible video scope for airway emergencies. What they identified, I think, quite keenly was that although of all of the airway management issues that they identified in a hospital, about 20% were in an intensive care unit and a smaller number in an emergency department, half of the deaths related to airway management issues happened in the intensive care unit. That's a huge factor. That means that although we're looking after sick people in the intensive care unit, and therefore they might have more reasons to have problems with airway management, more of these patients were dying. And the recommendations that came out of that were better monitoring, better training, better availability of equipment, and maybe changes to equipment, standardization of approaches, and better planning. We are a significant way, a way along the process of trying to standardise our approach to airway management. What that means is that in every area that deals with airways on a regular basis, that would be the emergency departments, critical care units and the anaesthesia corridor, that the airway trolley is standardised so that if uh, a member of staff comes to that, they know exactly what is in each of the drawers. We identified prior to the NAP4 recommendations, but certainly with more scrutiny afterwards, that there were times when we did not have availability of a flexible video scope because of either that the reusable fibre optic scopes were being cleaned or off for repairs, or it was taking too long to get the stack and the scope there for that particular patient's airway emergency. What I'd want for all of my patients is exactly what I'd want for my relatives the best possible care. There are times in many hospitals, I'm sure, similar to ours, where the availability of a reusable, flexible fiber optic scope is not always there. If you just look at your own practice, what we wanted to do is address that gap, and that's where the Ambua scope system fits in. It addresses the gap, it fulfills the recommendations, and most of all, it gives best possible patient care. Mm -hmm.